Welcome back to Cross-Cultural Communication and Management. This is Topic 2 of the Lecture on Nonverbal Communication. There are four topics in this lecture. In Topic 1, we have explored why nonverbal communication is what all human beings have to rely on in order to survive. That is at the universal level, where we are all the same. In Topic 2, we will look at where we are different from each other. Let's have a recap of the first topic. We have learned that at the universal level, nonverbal communication is critical for survival because it is the most basic form of communication, not only among humans, but also between humans and other beings. We also use nonverbal communication to judge others. We discriminate automatically and quickly. Finally, we use nonverbal communication to create identities, to let the world know who we are. So, all of us depend on nonverbal communication, but at the collective and individual level, the question is, do different cultures and individuals rely on nonverbal communication at different levels? And that is the focus of this topic. Here is an advertisement for a pretty well-known brand. Do you recognize the product and can you guess the message behind the ad? Here is another advertisement of the very same product, and it is a bit easier to know what is going on, isn't it? The first ad is quite indirect. It requires a bit of a guesswork. You need to zoom down the tiny little text in the bottom right corner to understand what the company wants you to understand. The product is nowhere to be seen. You need to rely on the context of the photo to get your conclusion. In contrast, the second ad is direct, to the point and relies less on the context to convey the message. These are two typical examples of high context and low context dependence. This is a concept proposed by Edward Hall. Basically, it means how much you need to rely on the context to know the true meaning. Now comes an interesting question, which ad is preferred by the Belgians and which one is by the Dutch? In a study, Participants from these two countries were shown 12 ads of different complexity levels. The Dutch, holding up to the stereotype of being very direct, preferred low context ads. The Belgians didn't actually mind complex advertisements. They understood it better and quicker. But this also means, without cross-cultural competence, we could spend millions of dollars on a campaign and customers have no idea what our ad is all about. When people with high and low context communication styles work with each other, misunderstanding may occur. Here is the famous stereotype between, again, the Dutch and the British. There are many interesting examples in here. So, I'm sure it's my fault, for the British could mean, it's not my fault. And the Dutch would hear, it was their fault. Or, that is an original point of view, would be for the British, your idea is, well, stupid, but for the Dutch it could mean, they like my idea. The same with, very interesting. What the British mean may be, I don't like it, and what the Dutch understand would probably be, they are impressed. Of course, these are exaggerated stereotypes, but they illustrate the idea that, for those who are high context and low context oriented, the same thing can mean differently. Please pause and take a moment to read some more of these stereotypes. When someone says, very interesting, bearing in mind that high context communication relies heavily on nonverbal cues in the surrounding context, and low context relies less, then we need to look at the context to guess the true meaning of this phrase. These nonverbal cues can be the body language, such as, what was the facial expression? What was the tone in which it was expressed? Where was the statement given? And the timing, at the beginning, or end of a project? What was the experience in the past? How does it go at this point? And what is the expectation in the future? It seems a lot to take in, but for those who are used to work and live in a high context style, it's second nature. My Japanese colleague used to say, My, read the air, which is a beautiful way of reminding me to focus on nonverbal cues that people in the meeting rooms are giving. 
Here is a great example of not reading the air. This tweet once went viral in Japan. So this in a meeting with a potential client, this person's counterpart said, that's a really nice watch. He was happy and started to talk about it, but then realized this actually meant, the talk is too long. Low context style tends to rely less on these cues. These are some more examples, where high and low context styles may crash head on. What does that mean yes? Yes, I'm hearing you, or, yes, I agree with you. When someone says, I have to inform my manager and wait for her opinion. Does that mean this is going to happen, or does that mean, the person just wants to reject the idea in a polite way? In negotiation, you may have someone asking a question about, or returning to a point that was previously agreed upon. Does that mean this person just forgot it? Or does that mean she or he wants to discuss that point, and renegotiate? You've probably heard that Thailand is a land of smile. It sounds nice if you embrace the low context style, until the moment you have no idea if your Thai colleagues are angry, or happy with you. A person who is capable of high context communication would know that, this smile is a happy one, and that smile is not, just by looking at nonverbal cues. I have used Thailand as a stereotype. So here are a few more. High context cultures tend to be Asian cultures, the UK, and Finland. Group cultures such as friends, families, those who are in the same team and organization can become very high context with one another. People don't need to talk much, to be understood, because just a look can mean a lot. This is important in negotiation, where a team needs to read each other quickly, and responds to the situation on the spot. Other group cultures, such as those with the same profession, hobbies, or religion, also can share high context communication style. Using stereotypes again, the Dutch is known for their directness. Some may say Russians and Israelis can be quite blunt as well. Among outsiders and new team members, low context is probably the starting point. The smoothness of high context does take a lot of time, trust, and understanding to build. Each style has a lot of advantages. Because people of high context know each other well, and can read nonverbal cues easily, they are effective, flexible, and can multitask if needed. They also learn quickly, thanks to a broad span of attention. For low context, logics and rules can make it effective for those who are outsiders, to work effectively with insiders. When they need to change, a clear common rule for all, makes change happen fast. Learning that follows rules and procedures does not happen fast, but in a steady way. At the individual level, how about you? Are you high or low context dependent? Or both? Or, it depends. Thanks to brain plasticity, you can cultivate a multicultural mind and be a dynamic person. For example, high context is extremely important for those working in international environment because it means you have both emotional intelligence and cultural intelligence. You look beyond words. You take in the big picture. You get the true meaning. And you avoid misunderstanding. Cultivating low context style can help you to give good clear instruction to others. In time of emergency, low context is also much more effective. To conclude, at the universal level, nonverbal communication is an important means to communicate, judge, and create identity. At the collective and individual level, the dependence on nonverbal communication may vary from high to low. High context dependence relies strongly on nonverbal cues. So communication is indirect, information is hidden in the surrounding. For in groups, high context communication is effective quick and flexible. International workers can cultivate emotional intelligence and cultural intelligence with high context. For low context, 
It relies less on nonverbal cues. Communication is direct. Information is specific and detailed. For in-group, low-context communication is transparent and clear. International workers can develop good instruction skills with low-context, 